Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bacor, creator, producer, host, editor, filmer, uh, studio keeper, <laughs> coffee getter. I do it all here, folks, a one-man show. Thank you very much for taking the time for episode 43 of the show. I'm getting this one out because I am going to be uh, taking some holidays relatively soon, so I'll be away for a little bit. So you won't see me any shows for the next couple of weeks. Um, as I'll be away enjoying myself and spending some time with the family. So I wanted to get a couple of shows out here, and this is the next one. So let me get right into episode 43, some good stuff going on. Remember here, I'm, folks, I'm here to educate minds one tailpipe at a time. That's my motto. First off, EVgo. They are one of the largest uh, EV charging station providers in the U.S., and they are testing now something in California, which is pretty neat. It is a basically a... RFID tagless or credit card less um, buying experience. So basically what you do is you plug your car into charge and embedded in the car software will be your payment information, your account information for EVgo, and that will be transmitted through the data link to the charger. It'll, the resolution will, will, will occur and then the charge, if everything's in order, will start happening effort does all that so they're testing one of these in the los angeles area in carson city right now but really it's designed as technology to really further simplify the ev charging experience and eliminate the hassle about having to carry all these rfid cards or using an app on your phone to, to tap uh, all these kind of things they want to make this thing as simple as possible it's based on a new iso standard called 15118 the technology is expected to begin to roll out on chargers that regular car uh, drivers can use later this year. And uh, so far, there are a few EVs that can use it. So I guess the secret is that you have to be able to upload this to your car somehow. And I don't know that process. They don't get into that, but I'm sure that that'll, that'll make its way into the headline. So again, just good to see EV chargers not only adding more and speeds getting increased, but just to try to help make that experience a little easier for EV owners. And you know, to it's all about ease of use and comfort. And I know that when I talk to a lot of people about charging, they're still a little apprehensive. So this is one way to help uh, alleviate uh, any concerns. Quick story that came out about Volkswagen. This is a report um, from looking at some of the announcements that Volkswagen has made in the ID platform around pricing. And I know I reported on this, oh, a while ago, probably uh, early part of this year, about uh, Volkswagen wanting or attending to have more of a people's car approach to ID. They want to be able to make, you know, sub $30,000 cars and really to get into that more mass market framework. Well, um, it looks like they may be able to do that, but they might have to start selling these vehicles at a loss. Uh, May 8th is just around the corner, folks, and that's when Volkswagen's going to open the pre-order books in Europe for the VWID. Um, I don't have a confirmation on, that's the hatchback that's still you know, being uh, dri driven around in camel gear. I don't have a firm name for that. I know that the code name was NEO, but I don't know, NEO, I don't know if that's going to stick, so I'll have to wait and see. Uh, but according to Auto Motor and Motor, motor and sport i don't know why i can't say that today the base version of this id um, will not be available initially in fact but they said that the price they estimate around 29.9 euro uh not bad for a 48 kilowatt hour battery pack uh, getting around 205 miles or 330 kilometers of wltp range so epa will be a little shorter than that um, you know, in countries like France, where they have pretty lucrative incentives, you could pick something like that up for under 24,000 euros. That's pretty compelling when you look at that, especially incentives thrown in. Now, so the first ID on the market will be for, for their launch or the launch edition will be the mid-range version of the ID and uh, around with a 62 kilowatt hour battery pack giving about 450 kilometers or 280 miles of WLTP, uh, WLTP range. The price on this one is should easily be above 35,000 euro, probably somewhere in the 39,000, 38, 39,000 euro, but we don't have confirmed pricing yet. Um, the public debut of this car is scheduled for September, so it looks like VW... Uh, maybe doing something a little bit different where they might be opening up pre-orders for a car that's really is sight unseen other than the prototype camo ones that you see flying around. So unless they come out with some kind of reveal by then, but uh, it looks like the debut, the public debut for the car is scheduled in September at the Frankfurt Motor Show. So again, the first uh, model they're going to come out with is the mid-range 
Sounds familiar, right? <laughs> Tesla came out, you know, with the Model 3 higher and they're scaling back. VW will, will do something similar and others are doing the same thing. Um, the catchy thing to this article is that um, they expect, the some of the analysts expect that uh, VW to lose around 3,000 euro per ID sold. Um, and they think that's because it may have low sales volume to start off, um, you know, VW has a hole that they have to dig themselves out of. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. And then they, some of these analysts don't expect the profits um, re really for VW to start making profits on the EW or sorry on the um, EV landscape until 2025. So in about five years, you know, again, it took Tesla a long time to stop stop being start being profitable, and they still aren't consistently profitable even today. Uh, you know, uh, some nine years later or whatever it is, ten years later. It does take time for folks. Now, the good thing about some of the other mon uh, auto manufacturers is that they build more than just be, you know, battery electric vehicles. They have all these other cars. And VW globally last year was the number one uh, vendor. And I think I've mentioned that with almost 11 million units sold globally of their vehicles uh, fleets. So they can build a lot of cars. Um, so I think what's surprising is, is, is that VW is leaning towards the expectations of having a loss situation when they start but again you know i've said this before all the hype all the advertising all the promotion that vw's you know doing all the talk they are saying they want to build a ton of electric cars so if they're willing to take a loss for a few years to do that to ramp up to get where they want to do it then i'm I, i'm glad that they're recognizing that up front and planning for that as they move forward in their roadmap. So keep watching. And if anybody um, in Europe does order an ID, I'd love to hear about your experience and what that is. Uh, get an idea of whatever it is from an ordering screen that they provide. Either send me an email with snapshots or send me a video if you want, and I can play that as part of my mailbag segment. Would love to hear from you. Curious to see what that's going to look like. So thank you uh, uh, very much if you do send anybody in. And again, let's keep watching VW and see where they go. Talked about Rivian on the last show in their Ford partnership or some <laughs> collaboration with Ford and some money going in there. Well, Rivian has said that they, they of course, have their R1T pickup truck that they're coming out with that they've been promoting and the R1S SUV. Uh, they've been showing these things off all over the place. Uh, they're driving them everywhere and doing, going to every car show and, and thing that they can do. Well, those aren't the only two vehicles that they're going to produce. There is also, I don't have it handy, but there apparently are some spy photos of a high-performance off-road rally car as well that they're going to come out with. I'm not sure how that's going to sell. Uh, the pickup is expected to arrive in 2021 and the uh, SUV model in 2022, a year after. In limited quantities, I believe I mentioned somewhere in the area of 20,000 units per year as they ramp up. So 40,000 collectively there. Um, but they do want to do other models that are focused on the truck and SUV market. And in the end, uh, at least in the, in the a short-term game plan over the next few years they want to build six electrified vehicles uh, so not just the one pickup truck and one SUV but most likely a few more models of the SUV and maybe some different versions of the pickup truck maybe a smaller pickup truck or something along those lines uh, and again it's all based on their skateboard platform which I mentioned on the last show is that they're going to license out to people and OEM it out now remember these guys are Michigan based they actually purchased a former Mitsubishi factory in normal Illinois that's where it's uh, where it's located and that plant used to churn out everything from eclipse hatchbacks to and to big endeavor suvs and chrysler dodge and plymouth badge engineer products as well so this plant similar to what tesla did with buying the numi plant this plant uh, is capable of pushing out cars and uh, you know after they retool it and get it set up and that's where rivian's going to produce their own cars as well as potentially those for others so if we talk about some oem relationships you know maybe they'll build something for ford maybe they'll build something for gm or others who knows the future is yet to be but they're in a good spot if they can uh, really ramp up as quick as they want to and get everything in order which it looks like they're doing so keep your eyes on rivian good for them i've said before in a lot of shows that the um commercial fleets is a big big marketplace that we should not ignore now i don't spend a lot of time on that because there's a lot of activity going on through municipalities, through governments, through agencies, through corporations, private, public, so forth, for electrifying their fleets, either either through pure EV, uh, plug-in hybrids, hybrids, or even hydrogen vehicles. There's a lot of push there. 
Well, um, one of the markets, of course, is consumer waste. Let's just put it at that garbage trucks and those kind of things that we see all the time that are on regular use for a lot of municipalities and for areas, regions. Well, BYD, of course, from China, uh, does a lot of buses and trucks. Well, they've just delivered their first electric garbage truck. They call it refuse truck, but let's just say what it is. It's a garbage truck in Southern California. Um, it's the BYD 8R Class 8 Automated Side Loader, or ASL. It's an all-electron collection truck to uh, waste resources, which is being used in the city of Carson. Um, this is the first one that, that's being, that has been put into service for residential collection operation in Southern California. And I'm sure that a lot of municipalities and other areas, regions are looking at this and studying to see how it goes. And they'll probably jump on fairly quick. It's got, of course, thanks to its, its zero emission and silent powertrain, it highly improves the comfort of living in the area. And hopefully more of these will enter soon, uh, service soon nationwide. If you're sitting at home and you know that your garbage is being collected because you hear the truck come and you hear it all, uh, you know, at least the truck noise will be much more uh, less with these electric vehicles. Um, in fact, Waste Resources has already ordered three more uh, BYD 8, 8R Class 8 and two of the smaller 6R Class 6s. Um, and, you know, they're already expecting to, uh, they don't talk about cost savings, but they do say in the article that. Uh, well, the organization is very much um, interested in how cost effective to operate and to maintain these will be. We already know the answers to that. It's going to be a lot less for them because of the easier maintain and uh, and their zero emissions. So excellent to see uh, these type of applications starting to come out. And if something like that's happening in your area of the world, send me an email or drop a comment on YouTube. I'd love to hear from you on that. Some quick announcements from Tesla that happened uh, a few days ago or, or, or late last week about the Model S and the X uh, getting bigger range boost and now the, with the introduction back of standard range versions of the S and the X. Um, the actual um, the newer models are getting a 10% improvement in top driving range. Uh, they are already quite high to begin with. Both on the S and the X, the S Fastback will be up to 370 miles and 325 miles for the Model X as a top range. Uh, these are EPA ranges, so these are phenomenal, and they are the best of any electric vehicle, especially the, that Model S. It's the highest of anything on the road today, uh, which is fantastic. And uh, people are looking for how much, you know, how much, what's the best range I can get. Tesla Model S right now by far is the leader. Um, now, this performance and range uh, increase was done without changing or adding any more batteries, which again is, is, a, um, is a secret weapon, so to speak. It's not so secret now because everybody knows about it, but it's a value added feature and attribute about Tesla's that they do provide these over the air updates to enhance the vehicle's uh, capabilities and functions and performance and all kinds of different aspects of the systems because they have so much software and better than the cars. So that is a, a plus for owning a Tesla. So because of this, they've been able to get a power systems revamp combining a permanent uh, magnetic motor in the front. Um, they actually are coming out with new motors, by the way, on these. A version of the rear unit from the Model 3 um, and the, they'll carry over the existing induction motor at the rear wheels. So because they do this, it provides an efficiency of up to 93% uh, or greater than 93%. So that's phenomenal. So with these improvements, the Model S and X can now take advantage also of 200 kilowatt charging on Tesla's version 3 superchargers. So if you're near there and 145 on the version 2, which I believe was fairly similar to what they could do before. Uh, maybe slightly lower, maybe 120 or so, I believe, on those ones. So 50% uh, faster charging upwards. And again, also in this announcement that Tesla is now coming out with a standard range Model S and a standard range Model X, they are back. So instead of just the longer ranges, Standard range Model S uh, with 285 miles, uh, well, zero to 60, it's fast. It doesn't really matter if it's four seconds or three seconds or whatever it's for. Starts at 79.2 US and goes up from there. And the Model X standard range at 250 mile range um, starts at 84,200 US dollar and goes up quite substantially from there. Both have a top speed limited, I believe, to 155 miles per hour. So there you go. So more enhancements from Tesla. A couple of new uh, trim lines that they'll that they're starting off with. And uh, again, if you're interested, you know, take advantage of whatever local incentives you may have at a state or a municipal level. I would certainly do that and have a look at Tesla. 
Right. Well, last item today on today's show is mailbag. Appreciate uh, some mail coming in. Uh, as a viewer named Michael, who's based out of British Columbia, and he's been uh, emailing me back and forth some of his story about his Kona EV order. He has now received one of the first ones in Canada. Um, I'll give you a little, just a synopsis of what he says. It, quote unquote, it's smooth and easy to drive. The acceleration in sport mode is phenomenal. A power comes instantly and silently, he says. Uh, it's got amazing tech in it, and the four level regen is really cool for driving around almost, almost without the brake pedal. His kids loves it. His dog fits at the back as well, with no trouble. Um, they find it that they prefer it over their outgoing x3 that's a big statement because the x3 from BM, bmw is a nice nice vehicle so um for for a mid-size crossover he says the kona ev is an excellent car they are really really happy with it and uh he sent me this about a week ago so i'm sure that he's already put something like five thousand kilometers on the car because i was talking to somebody yesterday once you um once you don't think about it you you buy an electric car once you start driving it you want to drive it and uh, you make almost any excuse to get into that car. Oh, we need a bag of milk. I uh, need a loaf of bread. No problem. I'll run to the store. Like, you know, whereas before is, ah, wait till next time till we go do groceries, right? So uh, it's a different experience. I know that a lot of EV owners put a lot of kilometers because they just are fun and they love, love, love driving the car. So thanks, Michael, for sending me um, this picture and your story and all the best to you. I really appreciate it. And again, if there are others that want to share their journeys into electrification, I would very much love to hear it. And if you'd like me, I can share it on my program. I think, I think it's inspiring. It's great to give feedback to others that watch this show or that are looking at the landscape, that are investigating EVs. You know, the best sort of advertising you could do really is owner feedback, is is talking about our experiences as a collective. You know, we can read uh, manufacturer magazines and pamphlets and watch video reviews all we want, but you really need to you talk to somebody who's living with one day in, day out, and what their experiences are like, especially in your area where you drive your weather patterns, traffic, whatever. It's very pertinent. So if you have the opportunity to go out and do that, um, you know, again, send, listen, you know, if you want to share your story with others, please do send me that via email and all that good stuff and that's it for this edition of the ev revolution show where i try to educate minds one tailpipe at a time is my motto i appreciate you sticking around and watching and as always commenting likes subscribing hey you don't like what you see put a dislike i you know i'm open to feedback uh, there i don't think i've had one show in this history of me doing this channel that i don't have at least one dislike and whatever you know folks it doesn't phase me at all i know that i'm not going to reach out and um, provide value to everybody i get it you know i'm i'm I've, i'm so blessed because i've already in the last year or so received emails and notes from people and talking to people saying you know i watched your show and in combination of that you helped me decide to get an EV and I got an EV. And that to me is what I'm all about. That's my goal here is to help get people into EVs. And if one person does it, I've achieved that goal. So thanks for continuing those comments. Don't forget, Fully Charged uh, UK coming up really soon. Check out their website. Uh, if you haven't uh, bought your tickets yet or, or registered, please do. I'll be there, going there soon, only in a few weeks. I'm excited about that. And um, again, uh, you know, I want to thank everybody that supports me on Patreon. It's always humbled and uh, really appreciated for anybody that wants that supports me. And if you don't know what that is, go check out my Patreon page. And you, if you feel up to it, you can sponsor a couple of bucks a month and uh, help me out. There's, there's really, I think a dollar a month is the minimum, if I remember correctly. And uh, so a big thank you for everybody watching. And again, a reminder, so this is the last show. There's going to be a bit of a break now for the next little time. Uh, so I may be slow in answering comments and I may be slow at responding on Twitter and all that kind of stuff. There's going to be a break because I am traveling, doing some well-earned vacation before we get into the busy summertime here with everything else going on. So thank you very much for watching. Always a pleasure and I love to hear from you. Uh, so again, uh, you'll not see me for a couple of weeks now, uh, but I will be back as soon as I can. And until then, everybody, please stay safe and thanks for watching and we'll see you the next time. Take care. Bye-bye.